Hey, this is Ramon, Channels Alpha 4, and uh, this is my Questions 4 series. Today we are going to be doing questions for evangelicals and fundamentalists. Now, before we start, uh, let me give you just a little background on my understanding of evangelicalism. I know nothing, okay? But here's what I do know. So, I'm going to show you a few things. This is a Catholic Bible, Catholic Study Bible. This is an academic Bible, okay? This is a Jewish study Bible, okay, uh, the Tanaka, and this is, according to its own definition, an evangelical Bible. Of these four Bibles, only one of them doesn't agree with the others. Can you guess which one? The evangelical is the only one whose study material disagrees with the study material in the other Bibles. The other three Bibles agree with each other and add to each other. The Evangelical Bible, or the Christian Standard Bible, disagrees with the JPS, the NAB, and the NRSV. Why is that? Well, um, I don't know. So I'd like to explore that with you. So, I printed these out so I won't mess it up. And everything's worded a little technical. So, and I'm going to say the same thing I said in my other video, uh, in my first video of this series. Answer the question I'm asking, not the question you think I'm asking. What is evangelicalism? Would you consider yourself a movement or a growing denomination? What does evangelicalism mean to you? Question number two. In your opinion, what is the difference between an evangelical and a fundamentalist. Question number three. For those of you who consider yourselves fundamentalists, how do you differ than other ultra-conservatives in other religious movements, such as the ultra-traditionalist in Catholicism or the ultra-orthodox in Judaism? Considering that all three of these groups each oppose, that is, affirm and put forth the same thing, such as a such as a literalist interpretation of the Old Testament, and women being subservient to men. Question number four. If you consider the Bible to be inerrant and or infallible, how do you to yourself reconcile when history, archaeology, and science directly contradicts the Bible's literal and legalist interpretation? Now, this is not an insult. This is something the Bible itself struggles with and changes its opinion on uh, post-exile. Uh, question number five. Evangelicals, according to Pew, only make up 25% of believers in this nation. Traditionalists are only a third or less than that. So, if activism and making new disciples through evangelicalism is truly one of your goals, how do you handle the fact that many atheists and secularists, especially those with the loudest and most popular voices, use the views of your most prominent spokespersons against the idea of religion itself, not only against Christianity, but they use your specific beliefs to undermine the legitimacy of religion. Question number six. Do you really deny the concept of evolution is as atheist claim? I'm not talking about theologically but as a matter of hard fact. In your mind, is it actually untrue? Considering it is provable in every way. In denying the proofs of evolution, how are you being any more logical than atheists who deny your proofs of God, assuming the proofs on both sides are valid and sound? Question number seven. How is the United States a Christian nation? While you can say that all the Founding Fathers were deist, and really only Thomas Paine held ideas that most Christians of any denomination or time might hold as heretical, remember I said might, the nation has always had a clear delineation between, between church and state, something the Protestants of the past fought hard for. Yet your reluctance to acknowledge this hurts many of our dialogues with Muslims who are quick to call us a religious state 
based on your rhetoric. While America, from its beginning and even before its founding, has always been a land of many religious views. Question number eight, and I want to remind you that I'm not talking to people who just consider themselves Protestants. I am specifically talking to evangelicals. That is who these questions are addressed to. If you consider yourself an evangelical, what do you believe about revelations? Do you believe, as I do, that it is poetic, metaphorical, and allegorical, with allusions to practical theology? Or that it is true and literal prophecy of things that will one day, as described, occur? Or do you believe, as most Catholics do, that it was talking about a specific moment in time when Christians were under the persecution of Nero in Rome, that Revelations is a message of hope? And one last question, question number nine, and I am continuing on the theme of Revelations. Do you believe in an imminent rapture to come before the second coming? If you do believe in a rapture, that is, something that must be interpreted from the Bible, then why do you have a problem with the Catholic idea of purgatory, which also must be interpreted through an understanding of the biblical text? All right, and I'm going to add a bonus question to that. If you do also hold that the rapture and the second coming is imminent, um, here's my question about that. Every 1,000 years, there's, an other, there's a different group who says it's going to happen. In fact, even from the beginning, uh, from the first time that the Gospels were really popular, people were saying it was going to happen. It never happens, okay? It's always later, okay? Maybe it already happened, maybe it's going to happen, but whatever it's going to happen, whenever someone says it's definitely going to be this day, it's never that day. So how do you guys handle that inside your own belief system? The fact that there have been many groups who have said 1988, 1999, blah, 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 18-something is going to be the date. There's a whole series called Carnival that was dedicated to just this kind of, um, this kind of misunderstanding and misapplication of Revelations. So how do you handle that, considering that Revelations was one of the books that was almost not included in the official canon the first time around? I'm not even talking about uh, later on when uh, Luther got a hold of it. So I'm just trying to understand that uh, these are not gotcha questions. These are honest questions that I honestly have. Now, here's one to my direct audience. Here's a question for you guys, not just to anyone who just clicked on this. This is part of an ongoing series. I want to know, based on my questions for Catholics and now my questions for evangelicals, what would you like to see next? Would you like to see questions for atheists or questions for Protestants? Because I kind of want to do questions for Protestants. But I plan on moving beyond just religious questions at some point. I want to expand my channel to more subjects, and I'd like to get into questions for atheists. Let me know what you guys like to see. Peace, like, subscribe, talk to you all later. See you all next week with another one of these videos. Please continue to watch either of my other series, which is me reading the Quran and me reading the Bible. And enjoy!